What's up, everybody? Welcome to Normieville. Well, we, we call you Normies. Well, we are back on Zion Williamson's neck yet again. You all have heard about all the drama that's going on with his girlfriend and his side chick or side chicks, plural. Miss Mariah Mills has even been tagging the New Orleans Pelicans in some of her posts because she has been insinuating that Zion Williamson's girlfriend was possibly doing some nefarious things to other women in a sort of an organized fashion. I will let you read her tweets to find out what exactly that is. But for one, Zion Williamson has not been on the court very much. I would reference you to a video, which I will leave in the comments section, that I watched recently. And they were explaining about when he is on the court, he was actually, uh, his I think per, points per game was actually number four behind, uh, who else? People like um, the Greek Freak, people like, uh, what's that guy from... 76 is Joel Embiid and other people like that. So he had one full season on the, I believe, or almost full season in which he was like top four big man in the league. But he's only played, I think they said, 30% of his games. He's been injury prone. And now he's at all this drama. And basically the Pelicans, I believe, are considering moving on from him. And that brings me to this article right here from SB Nation. The Pelicans want Scott Henderson. Would they trade Zion Williamson to get him? Well, I don't know. It's highly likely that it's possible that they could. Again, Scott Henderson is, if I'm pronouncing that correctly because there's two O's in there, Scott Henderson is one of the premier point guards coming out of college and the Pelicans are trying to move up in the draft, I believe, to the top. They're trying to move up in the draft to one of the top five spots to possibly acquire Scott Henderson. But there's a, a dilemma, and we're going to get into it. Let's read. NBA teams are still grappling with the ramifications of the new collective bargaining agreement. But one of the main takeaways so far has been stiffer penalties for teams paying the luxury tax. Partially was rampant throughout the season, and that's the way the NBA wants it. The super team era might be over. Against the backdrop comes the newest and hottest rumor of the NBA draft season. The New Orleans Pelicans have their eyes on point guard Scott Henderson, or Scoot Henderson, whatever, and they're willing to trade up in the top three to get him, according to league insider Shams Shariana, if I pronounced that correctly. With French super pros with French super prospect Victor Wemby, I'm gonna butcher that, set to go number one overall to the San Antonio Spurs, the Pelicans would have to pull off a deal with the Charlotte Hornets at number two or the Portland Trail Blazers at number three to land Henderson. I won't play that video because I want to play another. Well, you know what? Forget it. Let's play this video and see what Sham Shariana is going to add to the conversation, and then I'll talk. I'm John Serrano with breaking news powered by AT&T 5G. The Pelicans are expected to aggressively pursue a top pick, potentially two or three, in this upcoming NBA draft with their eyes set on Scoot Henderson, sources tell me. Henderson and Alabama's Brandon Miller are vying to potentially go number two to the Charlotte Hornets in the draft. Henderson worked out on Sunday in Charlotte and Miller goes on Tuesday. Expect the Hornets to further solidify their draft board as this week closes, but the Pelicans are among teams seriously pursuing that number two overall pick. Now y'all heard that, right? This has, well, the Hornets, are, I'm sorry, the Pelicans are trying to win, all right? I believe they have Brandon Ingram and a couple other, uh, soap, I'm sorry, superstars, uh, CJ McCullough. And... The Charlotte Horn, I'm sorry, the New Orleans Pelicans want to get their roster up to, again, try to go for the uh, the playoffs. I believe they had the play in this year, but of course they got knocked out. CJ McCullum, I believe, had a problem with 
Zion Williamson because he had a chance to play and he sat out talking about he wants to be, you know, get back to Zion or whatever the heck that means. But they had a chance to win, and I believe Zion had a chance to play. He did not. And that rubbed people the wrong way toward the end of the season. And now you have this on court, this off court drama, the off season. And Zion Williamson again has been played with injuries. He hasn't played a lot of his games, and he really hasn't been worth what they're paying him. He signed a contract. They they gave him a contract extension. It's just not looking good, really. This off court drama. He has he has major weight issues. I think they had a weight clause in his contract which is uh, not racist because just like that one thing they were talking about with uh, Kyler Murray in the NFL with the uh, the training and all that or the uh, the playbook, but that's another story. In any case, it's possible they can move on from him, but let me read some more. We have Henderson projected to go number two overall to the Hornets right now, but that's something of a hot take. The consensus less than two weeks from the draft is that Charlotte is favoring Alabama wing Brandon Miller, which will leave Henderson at number two on the board. For the Blazers at number three, Portland is in a fascinating spot entering the draft. Superstar Damian Lillard wants the team to go all in to win right now, but it feels like the team is more than one move away from contention. Is the Portland front office on the same page as Lillard, or would they prefer to add a premier young talent to the roster through the draft? In addition to being a tremendous point guard and prospect, acquiring the rights to Scott Henderson comes with another level of benefit. He's cheap. NBA rookies play on the cost controller contracts for the first four years before they cash in. And the second contract are more modest than third contracts. Now here is the dilemma. And then we'll get to another video I want to play from uh, clutchpoints.com. This brings us to the dilemma that the Pelicans are currently in. While the New Orleans is no super team, they didn't make the playoffs this year. Well, sorry, I didn't mean a lot of y'all. The Pelicans roster is about to get expensive, as detailed by team beat writer Shemet Dua. Okay. Dua hypothesized the Pelicans could be looking to break up the big three, Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and CJ McCullough, to swap in a young talent with more punitive tax penalties looming. Days later, the team's interest in Henderson was reported. Column is not landing you Scott Henderson in a trade. So, with the Pelicans deal Zion Williamson or Brandon Ingram, which have more value to teams around the league. Again, if they dangle Zion Williamson out there, they might actually be able to move up in the draft if they trade him for a draft spot. See what I'm saying? So, if they trade one or both in Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson, which on the surface would be a more valuable trade even though zion williamson is injury prone and he's fat let's just keep it real they can move up in the draft if they trade him because another team will likely probably whip him into shape he's comfortable there in new orleans but if he moves then he might have to actually uh get in shape and try to get me get his body more conditioned if you know what i mean but let's go to clutchpoints.com and i want to play this particular excerpt from Brian Windhorst, and because he's a, a very popular NBA insider, let's play what he had to say. Boy, Greeny, is there a lot of chatter about the picks that could move around the top ten in this draft? And one team that has emerged that really would like to move up from their spot at fourteen of the New Orleans Pelicans, potentially hunting a, a star player uh, caliber, maybe like a guy like Scoot Henderson. Um, the Pelicans have had some cursory discussions, from what I've been told. There haven't been any offers uh, made necessarily yet, but it makes you really not take too far of a leap to wonder if the, and the league is certainly wondering if the Pelicans are going to make for the first time truly Zion Williamson available ahead of next week's draft. To get up to that level in the, in the top five, you'd have to consider a player of this caliber. Um, he's obviously had injury history, a little bit of offseason drama recently. Um, so I don't know if anything's going to truly develop there, but I think it's fair to say, based on my conversations, there's, a, there's an eye being kept towards whether the Pelicans would make Zion Williamson available ahead of trying to get into that top, top end of the draft. Well, well, y'all saw that, right? It's possible that Zion Williamson could get traded. Now, this could have nothing to do with the off-court drama, but it's being mentioned. So, 
by virtue of that, I believe that that might have something to do with it or it might be his trade might be considered because of that. Amongst all the other things, again, his weight, his injury. And there's one thing that I heard on ESPN from Stephen A. Smith. And to me, it, it, it reigns very true in professional sports, but also in the corporate world, in your job and things of that nature. And he said this very profound thing to me. And he said, oftentimes in professional sports, the most uh, important ability is availability. And that means, of course, just being there most of the time makes you dependable. It makes people trust in your skills and your ability because you're always there. When they need you, you're around. They can count on you most of the time, right? Zion Williamson oftentimes has not been there. And when he was there, sometimes he wasn't in the best condition, right? He wasn't ready most of the, he wasn't ready sometimes physically to play, but he did. He put good numbers up, but look at him. His conditioning is very questionable at best. And that also might have something to contribute to his injuries because of his weight and his conditioning. Has he really taken this position serious as the number one pick being on the New Orleans Pelicans? Would somebody else may be able to make him focus a little bit more on a different team? Maybe the Charlotte uh, Hornets with Michael Jordan over there. These, these are questions. And I believe that this drama he has recently gotten to with these women on Twitter, these P-stars or whatever she wants to call herself because she's denying being a P-star even though that's what she was and she has OnlyFans and all this other stuff. In any case, she's been tagging the Pelicans directly in her post. And of course, it's being brought up now in, on the ESPN and other networks. Does this drama have something to do with them shopping him around? Maybe not. Maybe it's just purely professional that, you know, you've had some issues on the court and maybe we're considering moving on from you. Or that which I just said combined with this off-court issue that we don't really feel like dealing with and hopefully he is able to, you know, put it out, put that fire out soon. Well, you might be relocating. And that condo that she keeps talking about, she might get somewhere else, maybe in, in North in Carolina or elsewhere. But we'll see. You see what's going on here. Drama's going on. He's now in the court. And now he's being probably shopped around to get traded for a, dra a high draft pick. So just saying, his career could literally be hanging in the balance as we speak. But y'all see it again. I'm done talking about it. Thank you for attending another episode of Normieville. I'm just a normie trying to bring you the latest and greatest in sports, entertainment, news, politics. Let me know what you think about the down in the comment section. Please, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and the notification bell on your way out of the door. And I will see you on the next video.